Hey guys, YouTube's been real awesome about the community guidelines, so if you are over the age of 18, you're cool. But if you're not, please don't watch this. Today is another start to finish grow run and if you've watched this channel before you already know I'm going to cover all the details from the beginning till the very end and with any luck I can keep your attention the whole way. For this full grow run to make sense to the masses I will have to provide some context as I take you along this special run. Chill, Harley. Chill, buddy. And when I say I'm starting from the very beginning, I friggin' mean from the very beginning. Hey, how's it going? What is special about this run? It's, it's not the new grow light, it's the fact that I'm finally getting to grow clones from my prize Fino, which was a wedding cake crossed with banana buttercups that frosted up to, to I, I, why do I always try to come up with jokes? It was frosty. Found a prize Fino that I wanted to keep that was super special, revegetered successfully, finally took some clones. I'm gonna be starting a whole new run in this 4x4 with this new grow light, so. It, it should be good. It should be good. I am replacing the SF7000 with the Spider Farmers SE7000 Grow Light. Wow, those names can be confusing. Okay, well, despite the names of these lights not being that different, some of the notable differences with the SE series, in my opinion, is the light distribution. And, well, the extra boost in watt output the SE has over the SF7000. They really should change those names. Homie, hey. Bubby, you're in the way. Come on, Harley. Don't hit the light, champ. The SF models from Spider Farmer did get an upgrade to the diode layout from their predecessors, and this did improve the light distribution on those models. But the SC series still, honestly, I think is going to tackle the coverage job even better. The extended eight bars on the SC7000 will be fitting snugly against the four walls of this tent. And with the perfect spacing of bars full of diodes, the SC series provides the benefits of cross-lighting, kind of. But arguably, everything else is pretty much the same, from the Samsung diodes being used, which are the LM301B, the driver, also the same, as well as the efficacies of both lights are even Stevens at 2.8 micromoles per joule of efficacy. I, I, I can never die, got a lit spirit. Billy on my mind, 99 digits. She didn't want easy, now we no limit. Bitch, I did the time, this is not a gimmick. Than 10,000 hours, you can see the same power. I'm making dough in my tower. Kitchen got a lot of flour. Just got out my cold shower. Peck a big bowl of sour. Smoke my own brand of flour. Look down and wave to all the doubters. Hello. This model specifically fits snugly inside the Spider Farmer 4x4 tent, providing 
that wall-to-wall coverage. The revegging of the chosen prize, Fino, was surprisingly a very easy process, which, surprisingly again, I failed to replicate with the Wildberry Cake Fino I wanted to keep, so I guess, it, I guess it's not so easy. But here's what I did. After harvesting majority of the flowers on the prize Fino, I left a few behind, and these flowers will be the location of which new growth will be sprouting. After that, it becomes pretty straightforward. Simply place the plant back under vegetative lay schedule, and of course, keep the plant fed. And then, you wait. And uh, wait. And well, uh, wait a few more weeks. Because it did take well over 30 days for the plant to even throw off its first shoots. And I am not kidding when I say this. It was well over two months before those shoots were good enough to really take clones from. And well, that brings us to this day, which is rounding a, a three and a half months of revegging just to get to this point, and today, I'm finally taking clones. The plant's canopy is a little wild at the moment. This cloning process should help tame this girl and clean it up a little for creating more clones in the future. I'm placing the cuts I take into cell pots full of Gaia Green's living soil mixed with a little bit of worm castings and 444 all purpose. I know, looks primitive, but this process does work. These clones will root and have food in the medium to support healthy growth. Well, if Chattanooga boy had a dollar and a dime, it out from Nashville on the hard rock line. I'm working on that old steamboat and learn to ride and steam. When my feet had touched dry land, how happy I did feel. Been saving every penny for to make up through the fall. Working for that dollar, but it never adds up at all. But coming around the river banker, the old train was so sane. The very next thing you hear from me, I've been talking. The reveg mom is clean and ready for some vegetative growth. I am top dressing this mother with organic worm castings and 444 all purpose nutrients. I can just somewhat forget about it and focus on what I have going on upstairs. As long as I keep up with the watering, the slow release food, and the microbials specifically will have my back and take care of this plant even when, even when I guess I'm not. Most of you know from my last upload, I almost lost all this content for this run because I, I, because I didn't back my shit up and I dropped my hard drive. And just chill, everything is triple backed up, okay? I did have to go through a data recovery process which isn't exactly perfect. They recovered as much as they can but ultimately you do kind of just get what you get and there were a few folders missing. So I am trying to piece this story together as seamlessly as possible but um uh yeah here we are two months later pretty much this whole cloning process has disappeared. So. <laughs> Let's move on. The clones are rooted nicely into one gallon pots and have grown to a decent enough size to start a five plant clone run. Today, I am preparing my living soil for the flowering cycle, starting with a base of organic worm castings and a simple but effective 50-50 ratio of the 444 all-purpose and the 2A4 bloom. This is slow release nutrients for the plants and it's and it's well it's the only ingredients they are getting. Well, besides water. Oh yeah, and mycorrhizae. I really got to write this script better. Mycorrhizae is a symbiotic relationship that occurs between the plant's roots and specific fungi in the soil. These fungi grow close to the plant roots and the plants immensely benefit from this relationship. Microbes are a huge part of this style growing and they have a long stat sheet. They help break down organic matter. In the process, they improve the fertility of the soil and the structure of the soil by increasing its organic content. 
They also help transform nutrients into essential minerals that the plant uptake through the roots. And the beauty, the beauty part of all this, guys, is you can control the levels of microbes in your garden, which is why I love using organic worm castings to help build that population. Today, I am installing a trellis net, mainly be because these girls do need support, but also a trellis, super easy tool for maximizing coverage. These plants are now going to be going through a pretty dramatic health transformation since, well, since now they're kind of being cared for. They are transplanted into five gallon fabric pots full of fresh living soil, slow release dry amendments, and organic worm castings, if I didn't already mention that. They've been cleaned up from bottom to top and are ready for a new home in a controlled environment. The plants haven't had much training up until now. Other than each being taught twice during its veg process, these plants have been left to their wild nature and have just been growing up into the light. All my circulation fans are set. The AC Infinity 6 inch inline fan is venting everything outside and the Spider Farmer SE7000 is dimmed to 50% for the time being. I'm letting the plants root and show some signs of improved health before I just go flip the flower and increase the watts. After only a few days of being in their fresh new pots, the plant's roots were starting to work their way through the medium. The mycelium webs from the mycorrhizae were now being connected with the roots, speeding up the plant's ability to drink and utilize the food that is in the living soil being inoculated slowly with each and every watering. The plant's growth started to show rapidly. I am flipping this garden into flower today and I can tell I'll be in for a ride because these plants are already bursting with pistol hairs on every node. These plants are irking for that irking? Irking it? Why did I go with that word? <laughs> Retry, these five frosted banana clones are primed and ready for the cycle to change to 1212. That's less creepy. It's approaching the third week of flower and the plants have not just stretched through the trellis but they have seemed to have established their flower sites and node spacing. The early flower stretch spared me no room between the SC7000. Future concerns is that some of the top sites might get some light bleaching. I don't anticipate any more vertical growth but uh, yeah I'm kind of just like yeah hoping that this is not that big of a deal. Right this second, the canopy um, uh, needs some attending to. From topping, super cropping, low stress training to the use of a trellis to defoliation, I pretty much put it all under the umbrella of canopy maintenance. It's, well, I guess it's all things that shape the garden. Today's chore is to clean the canopy with some defoliation and I am doing it by removing any large fan leaves that are blocking light to the lower parts of the plant. It's week four, day 28. The majority of nutrition provided by top dressing is not instantaneous. If I want to boost the middle to the back end of flower, I will have to top dress a couple weeks before that stage begins so the food can inoculate, break down, and become available. Preventative measures are important with organic gardening. Our ability to correct an issue is certainly not as fastly dealt with like gardeners that use liquid synthetics. For the middle of flower feed, I am simply using the 2A4 Bloom at 1 tablespoon per gallon of medium and organic worm castings at 4 tablespoons per gallon of medium. City 
you in my day one. I ain't gotta worry, cause they A1. What ain't in the field, then you can't come with us. My little shorty going stupid, going straight dumb with us. I'm a big time, still humble in the hood. Gotta keep it positive on nothing but the good. When I'm on vacation, I be stunting like I should. Got a real queen falling, she gon' stumble on her wood. And I still be doing Bennett with my brother down. And I know that if I got it, I'ma cover them. And I know that if I need it, they gon' give it back. Gotta practice what you preaching, I be living that. Taking trips around the globe, bringing game back.